Hi guys, it's Debbie with Debbie J's Crafting Corner. Today I'm going to be playing with the Clear Stampin' Die of the Month from Spellbinders. This is called Holiday Besties. And yeah, these little guys are just friggin' adorable. We've got a snowman and his little snow bunny friend. We've got a little bear and his penguin friend and a bunch of sentiments to go along with. And I think this is just freaking adorable so what i'm gonna do i just had an idea as i was looking at this you know what would be kind of cool to have them kind of going around okay what inspired me for that i had this in my hand i pulled this out because i was deciding which stamp platform was i going to use and i already had the spin for the stamp and spin already on this one so this is the stencil and stamp platform and then the stamp and spin both from Sizzix and my waffle flower grip mat underneath to hold my cardstock in place so we're going to see how this goes i've only used this a few times and so far i am loving it because I can't make a wreath to save my life, but I have actually made a couple of cool cards using this so far. So love it so far. I'm going to, I think I'm going to just stamp everything in black and then I can color it up. You could use just different colors and make a cool pattern paper, but you know, I think this is what I want to do. So we've got our two stamps that are our friends. They come both of them attached so you can use them very easily and then I'm gonna just add them do I want them facing out or I think I want them get to be facing out so I'm going to set them on my stamp I mean on my platform here I don't know if you can see that there are on the stamp and spin there are quadrants so we've got one half, one half, we've got it in quarters. It's also cut into eighths and it's even got some other notches so you can do even smaller pieces. But the way that it turns is usually about one eighth turn is how it turns. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and stamp these out and then I'll be able to stamp out the other half. So two stampings to get all of our critters down. For this card um, I did take a bigger piece of cardstock there and then I can trim it down however I want to do it and I think I'm going to go back to my typical which is stamping in VersaFine Claire Nocturne and then we can heat emboss now I am going to try <laughs> to to break my bad habit of not using an anti-static powder tool for this so got one of those out this is one from ranger i believe there's lots of different options out there and i have a couple so let's go ahead and get all of our things out this is what happens when i have an idea anyway i'm going to first start off with putting my anti-static powder all over my cardstock so that the ink stays where i well the embossing powder stays where i want it and then I'm just going to add some ink down. So like I said, this is VersaFine Claire Nocturne. And they look pretty cute, but this is the first time these stamps are being used. So usually for me anyway, that means I have to stamp them at least a couple of times. And this is just a, this is just an eraser, a chalk eraser. Um, I picked it up at Creativation from Illuminicolor, Illumicolor precision tools they were at the show i think this works perfectly for being able to use with your stamp platform i do not have a link to get that i need to see if i can get a hold of them and get one because i've been using this for months and i know you guys ask me every once in a while but if you have a chucky tool or a debbie tool or just a, an eraser for a chalkboard that will work great for this. It will just needs to be able to slide easily on there. I've even used paperweights. Okay, so that is there. Now I'm going to turn it. I'm going to go one, two, three, four turns. Checking to make sure it's in the right spot. And it is. And now we're going to ink up the other ones. Just doing the same thing. Thank you. 
Now after stamping the first one, I realized that I probably should have turned this guy a little bit more, but it's still going to be fine. I think this is still going to look cute. And our present needs a little bit more ink. There we go. So this is ready for us to do our heat embossing. So using my Wow Clear embossing powder and just going over the top. So I took out my Ahuhu markers and just colored these little guys up. The color scheme I basically took from some pattern paper that I found in my stash. And now I'm, I'm going to do a little masking and some ink blending over it because I don't really want to go with the white background behind these guys. So I used the dies, the coordinating dies for this stamp set and just stuck some post-it tape down and cut through there. You can use whatever you typically would use for masking. I only did one of each though, and I just realized I still need to finish up um, the little pink ones, but that's okay. I can do that once we get done. So now I'm just going to cover these, a couple of our images, and then bring in um, some inks and do some ink blending over it. It is going to leave a little bit of a white outline around each of our images, just like a regular die cut, but I think that's gonna still look super cute. Okay, I changed my mind. So instead I went ahead and cut out some more masks and went ahead and masked the whole thing off. Now I'm gonna go in with some blue ink. I've got some Simon Hurley, Clear Skies, Remember Me, and Midnight Snack. I think I'm gonna start off with Clear Skies in the center, plus whatever's already on my brush, which looks like it's Midnight Snack, but that's okay. I'm gonna just do a little blending and the masks are going to protect the space underneath them so that they don't get any blue all over my little critters. And I think I'm gonna just move, go from one and get, then go back. I do have a little bit darker in the center than what I wanted, but that's okay. I do love the Remember Me. It's kind of a bluish little bit of teal in there and it's going to warm this up a little bit. Yeah, I love that color. And I have gotten a little spoiled since I started using one of the grip mats for my ink blending. So I'm going to pull it back out and use that. It's going to make it easier so I don't have to hold everything quite so tight so that it doesn't move around. Because the mat is going to hold it steady for me. Okay, now I'm going to go in. I think I'm going to actually add a little bit of the Midnight Snack around the outside and then do go forward, yeah, dark to lightest again once I get done.
Okay, I am going to say that that is done. I am going to be trimming this down, so having the edges a little light is no problem. Because those are going to get trimmed off anyway. So let's go ahead and remove the masks. <laughs> oh, they are stinking adorable. One thing I didn't do yet is I didn't spritz it with water, so we're going to do that to add a little texture to the background. And I'm going to add a little bit of watercolor splatter. This is my Gonzai Tombi Starry Colors. And I'm just going to mix up some of that. Just added some water in there. And then I'll put a little bit of splatter down. And I decided I wanted to go with more than just one color. Usually I just stick to one of the colors of watercolor when I do this. And I don't do it as often as I should. And I don't mind that it's going on top of my critters because it's just going to look like there's a little bit of snow on top of them. I think that'll be pretty cool. Okay, so here we go with the yellow gold. Okay, and now we can just let that dry. Since the colors were inspired by this paper pack, I'm using a piece from that paper pack. This is going to be my matting layer. And I want to trim it down a little bit smaller than A2 size. Also using my new deco trimmer. I've only used it a couple of times. And I'm going to experiment a bit with it. It's going to give a little bit of an interesting edge instead of my standard straight edges. So um, that means I need to cut it a little bit wider than I normally would so that I can cut the other side. Okay, so I'm going to cut this at four and a quarter. Love that sound. And we're going to go with about five and three quarters so that I can cut this down. That's probably too big. Anyway, I'm going to cut this down to four by five and a quarter. And that's going to be my matting layer. And that means that I need to cut this smaller. Okay, I think what I'm going to wind up doing, let me look at this. In order to get all of them, because I did the circle so wide, I probably should have brought them in a little bit smaller. But you can see that I would wind up chopping off the heads if I do one of the other sides. So I think what I'm going to do is... My brain just stopped. Okay. Would have been so nice as I said, I needed to have it smaller in the center and I didn't do that. And I love the background too. So that means I probably need to make this into a bigger card. So although I don't do a lot of five by seven cards, I do have a couple of card bases. And if I just trim it down a little bit, this will still fit. So that'll be good. And I can always use these pieces as accents. So I'm not wasting that either. So let's go ahead and trim this down. I am going to stick with that deckled edge. So since this is in the center, I do want it to be about six and a half. Is that right? Yeah, I want it to be about six and a half, and this measures to about six. So we need our snowman to be right around the three inch mark. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger than that, and that way I can trim it more if I need to. And then I'm just going to trim a little bit off of the edges. Right now that shows five, so let's do a little bit more than five. It is going to cut off part of our snowman, but that's okay.
Okay, so I'm probably gonna need to trim this down a little bit more. And that's true. The top and bottom, those are fine. The long ends do need to be trimmed down a little bit. And it looks like I could trim off about a quarter inch on each end and that should be good. And I'm again using my snowman as a guide. So I'm just gonna move him over a little bit down to about a quarter inch more. And we'll do the same thing on this side. And then we will test. And it is, it fits on there, but it does need to be a little bit more. So I'm gonna keep on going. Okay, so now that fits. And I can use, I think, This is big enough so that I could trim it a little bit further in and use that as an accent, but I don't know that I actually need to. I think instead I'm just going to ink up the edges with my Midnight Snack ink and we're gonna call the panel done. So as usual, I am popping everything up on foam. This is still a pretty flat card because we have that big panel. And I thought about doing another one of the characters and put, popping them in the middle, but instead I'm just gonna add the sentiment there. So we're gonna go ahead and pop that down right into the center of our card. And that is gonna finish up this fun card. I love the way it turned out. You guys have a wonderful day. Be sure to check back and see the other videos using the club kits. They'll be coming out in the next couple of days. So y'all have a wonderful day and I will see you soon. Bye guys.